Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. It is June 1st, 2016, and here's a look at our top stories. Tonight, Facebook is tracking you on the web even if you don't have an account. But if you do have an account, they just changed your ad settings without your consent. InfoWars tells you how to disable it. Then, responding to media attacks over donations to vets, Donald Trump disclosed who got the $5.6 million, including $1 million of his own money, in a press conference yesterday, and challenged the media to see how much Hillary Clinton gave. You won't believe it, or maybe you will. What difference at this point does it make? And a murder-suicide in L.A. locks down the UCLA campus, and police go into a de facto martial law. InfoWars reporter Joe Biggs was live in L.A. at the time. I heard gunshots, shut the door, locked down the whole place. Oh, so you actually heard gunshots, it was close to you? Yeah. yeah, I was in the building. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. And tonight we start with some very sad news. You probably heard the story by now about the UCLA shooting. And um, when you talk about these type of shootings, it's always a lot of current information, changing information. So the story I tell you now could very well change. Uh, by the same time tomorrow. But this is the story as of now, as of this recording, according to the LA Times. UCLA shooting live updates, two dead in murder-suicide, and a note has been found. And they're saying that two people, both males, have been shot dead. Uh, police are speculating that based on the appearance of the deceased, they believe that it is a professor and somebody young enough to be a student who then turned the gun on himself. They say a note was found, but they're not exactly sure what the motive was. So it's a very sad scene. Uh, nobody wants to hear about these type of shootings. Uh, it's just type of violence that uh, plagued the country. We see recently the shootings in Chicago, as we see pretty much every big holiday weekend in Chicago. And when you have these type of shootings, of course, it shuts down the school activities. A lot of people were taking finals. The finals got canceled. There were actually other activities that were taking place that also got canceled. One of them was the, I don't know if you'll call it protest, but the uh, speeches that Milo, the activist, was giving there on the campus. Now, there's a lot of interesting and downright funny videos concerning this, but due to the seriousness of the UCLA, UCLA shooting, we're not going to play all those videos, but you can watch them on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube at your leisure. But now let's just talk about the Milo event. It wasn't just the shooting, but also a bomb threat that shut down the event after uh, he had a successful speech yesterday. And it says before the event even started, groups of protesters gathered outside the art building where Milo was to speak. And of course, they uh, shut that down for safety concerns. And as I said, you can find all those videos on the Alex Jones channel on YouTube. Joe Biggs was also there and we'll have an update from him. Uh, it was right after the shooting at UCLA when people were starting to move about when they uh, took down the shelter in place scenario and allow people to move freely that he had a chance to go out and talk to some of the students out there. And you'll have a chance to look at that a little bit later. Now, as we're talking about this shooting, there's an interesting article of by CBS News, and they show pictures of people barricading themselves in, you know, the shelter in place type of scenario. And it's very scary. If you scroll down, you can see people uh, using chairs to barricade the doors, uh, trying to tie doorknobs to printers, any, anything that they could do to uh, keep the perpetrator from getting to them. And I can only imagine what that's like. I'm sure it's a rather terrifying situation to uh, just hope that the guy doesn't get to you in time. But as we reported earlier, it does appear to be a murder suicide. And moving on from this hateful act to other types of hate speech, we see that Facebook refuses to remove I want to effing kill Donald Trump page. And this is after they signed a pledge vowing to remove hate speech within 24 hours. Yesterday, Facebook announced that it was teaming up with Twitter, YouTube, Microsoft, and the European Union to stop racist, violent, or illegal content by agreeing to review flag posts within 24 hours and have them removed if necessary. The company has also vowed to promote independent counter narratives that encourage non-discrimination, tolerance, and respect. And in the image, you see the choice of weapons as they're talking about how you want to kill Donald Trump, whether it's brass knuckles, a golf club, or a brick. Uh, they're saying go after Donald Trump any way you see fit. And you guys know how I feel about Donald Trump. That's well documented. But the issue is you can't threaten violence against the guy. You definitely can't physically attack him or his demonstrators or police that matter who protect him. And this is a common theme that I hear when I talk to uh, these demonstrators, these anti-Trump demonstrators. They say, we feel justified to go out here and throw bricks and fire and barricades and horses and cops and hit other protesters in the head with rocks because we don't like Donald Trump. And I was like, that's completely asinine. 
There are many people here, you know, the uh, pro-Trump people who don't agree with Hillary or Bernie, but they don't go out to the rallies that they have and inflict violence. And they'll always show you like some guys, you know, getting into a shoving match or a fist fight. And if you want to say that is Donald Trump's fine, fine, I'll hear that argument. But if that's Donald Trump's fault, it's Bernie Sanders' fault. Those people sit, sit off the right in Albuquerque. They were throwing all the things that I mentioned earlier. And once again, I don't blame Bernie Sanders for that. No more than I blame a guy for getting in a fight if he's wearing a Trump hat. I don't think it's either one of their fault. But the issue is you have to have some type of accountability and these uh, anti-Trump people just do not have it. And honestly, they're driving people to Donald Trump when they do these type of actions. They feel justified. They're so self-righteous, these social justice warriors, to go and inflict violence on people they don't even know because they don't like a political candidate. Candidate. This guy's not even president yet. And because he's a uh, candidate nominee, they feel justified to go do this type of violence. It's completely ridiculous. It has no place, and they continue to project things onto this man that he didn't even say. Once again, not a Trump supporter, but he never said he wanted to deport Muslims. Everybody keeps saying that uh, he's encouraging violence. I'm like, how is he encouraging violence against racial and ethnic groups? I'm not understanding this mentality that you guys keep putting out there. And they say it as is, as if it's a fact. And I don't know if they heard it on Facebook or Twitter or wherever they're getting their information, but they completely hate on this guy for things he didn't even say or believe. If you want to talk about the wall, you want to talk about torture, uh, you want to talk about uh, domestic uh, surveillance, uh, privacy or lack thereof when it comes to his campaign, that's fine. Those are legitimate arguments. That doesn't give you the right to assault somebody, but those are legitimate arguments. But they're not doing that. They're just fighting all these phantoms and these uh, straw men that they use to project their hate onto this political candidate. And that's a very long-winded way to talk about our next article as we talk about Facebook. And it continues with this. Facebook quietly opts users into off-site ad tracking. It says Facebook recently began tracking and serving ads to web users who don't even have an account on the social media site. In doing so, Facebook also quietly changed the ad settings of its users without their consent. And you have to watch Facebook. Uh, for me at this point, Facebook is pretty much a glorified Rolodex. I just use it if I lose my phone number or, or something like that. I don't do uh, too much of my conversations on Facebook, but they always change something. It's like at least one thing a year. They'll change your settings or they change a policy or something else. So you have to be very careful if you do choose to use Facebook. And they have this quote from the Wall Street Journal. Our buttons and plugins send over basic information about users browsing sessions. For non-Facebook members, previously we didn't use it. Andrew Bosworth, vice president of Facebook's ads and business platform told the journal, now we'll use it to better understand how to target those people. Uh, a lot of people don't want to be targeted, and if you told them flat out, they would just refuse, but you're not doing that. You're using these sneak tactics to go in there and track people who aren't even members of your site uh, when they're not even on your site. It's completely ridiculous, and they feel justified in doing so. We've all seen it. Uh, Facebook, uh, as well as many other organizations, have been linked to the uh, PRISM scandal. Uh, Edward Snowden told us about that. But a lot of people don't care. Uh, if you don't care, I guess it doesn't bother you too much. But for those who do care, uh, Mikhail, Thalen, uh, Mikhail Thalen has some tips here that you can do to uh, rid yourself of the Facebook machine, of the Facebook monster, and try to get away from the eye of Sauron. And you can go look at those on your own time. Now, as we're talking about privacy or lack thereof, you can't help but uh, mention Mrs. Clinton because we all know about the email servers and it's even to the point where liberals won't defend her anymore. We showed you the clip last week of MSNBC where they were like, I, just can't, I can't believe she just continues to lie. Everything she just said is a lie. Yeah, and she's been lying for a very long time, but all you hear about is how she's so qualified and she dodges sniper fire and she cares so much about the women, even though she calls them bills, bimbos and all this other stuff. And some people just flat out tell you that they're voting for her because she's a woman. Uh, but I don't think that's a very good policy, but to each his own or her own, I guess, in that case. But now we're talking about uh, campaign donations because this has come up in the news. Because when you have all the mudslinging, they have to sling it in every which way possible. And now they're talking about charitable donations because uh, they keep attacking uh, ex-candidate. You didn't give enough money to this group. You didn't give enough money to that group. You're exploiting this or that group. And now they came out with this report Hillary Clinton has only donated $70,000 to veterans. And this is from Breitbart. The list of donations from the Clintons is not comprehensive, but it is dwarfed by Donald Trump's release of a list of 41 groups that identify donations of $5.6 million to veteran groups. So you can say what you want about the man. Uh, he said that he definitely does want to make the military big and strong, and I think he's doing that. 
when he donates to veteran groups. I don't have any issue donating to veteran groups. It's just when you feed into that military industrial complex, that's when I get a little bit iffy. When you spend billions of dollars on these MRAPs and you leave them overseas for our enemies to use against us, I have a problem with that. And once again, that's not a Donald Trump issue. That's a previous presidency issue of going back for many, many years, not just uh, Obama, but you can talk about weapons being given to our enemies with uh, Obama, Reagan, uh, uh, Bush, you know, Bush going over overseas, starting a war for nothing, yellow cake lies, all the things that they continue to do. So if we do see a President Trump or a President anybody, whether it's uh, Johnson, Clinton, uh, Bernie, anybody else, uh, and I hope these guys take account to this and understand that you don't want to keep this military industrial complex going. It's costing the lives of our men and women. Uh, people are dying over there. They're coming back with uh, DU poisoning, uh, limbs blown off, uh, PTSD, and uh, nobody really has a good answer as to end this. And my answer would be just stop all these unconstitutional wars. Protect yourself if necessary, but don't go over and be Team America World Police. And this is my argument for that. And this is one of the few things I agree with Trump on. I'll, I'll give him this. When he talks about his foreign policy, when he talks about places like Libya and Syria, and when we think about Libya, you go in and you uh, kill Gaddafi. We came, we saw he died and all this. Uh, that's what she said. And now it has descended into pretty much a giant terrorist training camp with all these terror groups, you know, fighting for supremacy. And that's the issue with it. It's just like uh, a more simple example. Let's talk about a drug dealer on a street corner, right? You hear the adage, that you arrest a drug dealer and by next week there's another guy on that same corner because you haven't eliminated the need or the want for drugs. All you did was take one guy off the street and when they come arrest the next guy, they're just gonna put him into a prison. Uh, they're gonna build another prison when that prison fills up and you'll have the uh, prison industrial complex going live and well, these guys are working for slave wages, making license plates, furniture, whatever it is. And then people say like, well, I don't have my $15 an hour because they're paying guys in prison of uh, you know, five cents an hour, whatever they can legally pay them to make all these things that you would otherwise be able to make on the street. Like you guys saw that video. I think uh, Josh and Zimmerman shot that video about the lady talking about she had a furniture company. I'm, I'm not sure if she produces furniture, but she uh, moved it at least. And one of the girls in the video is like, uh, uh, what, uh, what are movers gonna do for us? Why should I move furniture? I'm like, it's a job. If you don't wanna move furniture, you know, go get a college degree or go start your own business or do something else. It's, it, it's a job. If you don't wanna work there, go work someplace else. But that's just the mentality of the uh, social justice warrior. So that's a very long-winded way of saying, I'm not projecting all those things I mentioned onto our current candidates, but if these candidates become our president, which at least one of them will, uh, I hope they take these uh, situations to heart and actually do something about them. And that's one of the stories of Mrs. Clinton. Let's talk about some medical tyranny because beyond uh, people trying to force things on you like vaccinations, and I'm not anti-vaccine, I'm pro common sense. When I go to CVS or Walgreens and I ask them for an insert and the insert says on the uh, insert that it could give me, uh, when I get a flu vaccine, that could give me uh, nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, and so on and so forth. I'm like, the vaccine can make me just as sick as the flu virus, I'd rather just take my chances, drink some orange juice and uh, eat some chicken noodle soup. But they tell you everything the hospital just do are uh, great, fantastic, even though you can look up the uh, statistics for yourself. There's a good chance you're going to be killed by a doctor if you do go to a hospital regularly. Now let's talk about this. No action taken against hospitals or blood banks, says the RTI activist, and this is in response to over 2,000 people getting HIV from blood transfusions in India. In the last 17 months alone, 2,234 persons across India have been infected with HIV while getting blood transfusions. The maximum number of such cases is 361, was reported from Uttar Pradesh due to unsafe blood transfusion practices in hospitals. And a lot of people be quick to say that was over there and, and that's their issue. And, and I do agree that to an extent, I agree that we have uh, tougher screening practices here, but also as I was saying uh, with the vaccines and uh, damaging the kids, killing the kids in some cases of the World Health Organization, forcing vaccines onto the kids in India and their official policy, their official statement after all these kids died was, whoops, uh, you know, Johnny didn't check the label on the vaccine before he gave it to the kids. That's a completely pathetic excuse. So you have to be careful when you go to hospitals. I'm not saying hospitals are bad. I'm not saying that doctors are the devil, but they're prone to human error just like anybody else. I know they got, you know, this million dollar degree that they paid for and they have it up on the wall and everything, but. They're human just like you and me. If you're a mechanic, you've been a mechanic for 20 years, you can still make a mistake. It's the same with anybody. So just be aware of these things uh, before you go through uh, any type of these procedures. 
Now we see this, a refugee translator has been denied a visa despite helping U.S. forces. Now I have always maintained I'm a fan of legal immigration. If you go through, you get your, your visa or whatever, you want to come to the United States of America, that's great. In this case, I think this guy should be accepted because he helped Marines fighting overseas. And he said uh, when the time came for him to leave uh, the place he was in, I believe it was Syria, he was denied a U.S. visa access for him and his family. Now he's moving from camp to camp, afraid to go back to his homeland because he thinks he's going to be murdered by the people who know that he helps the Marines. So this guy, I, I'd welcome him in. Just like anybody who wants to come here for you know good and positive means, uh, come on in. I have no issue with you as long as you do it the good and proper way. Now, finally, for our last story tonight, before we go into more special reports, I want to talk about the lowest common denominator. The no child left behind, uh, basically socialism in the classroom. They're now telling kids on the National Honor Society, you cannot represent the National Honor Society at your graduation. You can't wear the sash. If you, if you win a big basketball tournament, you can't walk around with the trophy because you have to be the same as everybody else. And to this, I think you're lowering the bar to the point where why would I even try to be on the National Honor Society if I'm just going to be treated like everybody else? No, he did these things because he was a spectacular student and he should be recognized as such. Here's a look at that video. So it's like, I don't know why we're not allowed to wear it. I don't, I don't get it. His mom's frustrated too. They deserve it. They work so hard for it. She wrote to the principal and says she got this message back. Graduates do not wear any club or organizational regalia. The National Honor Society sponsor told her the administration wants everyone to feel included in graduation and not single students out. If you choose not to work that hard, then that's okay. I mean, I wasn't an NHS kid. And that's it for this segment. We'll be back right after this. So I admire Pastor James David Manning for his courage. Atla, A-T-L-A-H dot org. Uh, so God bless you, my friend. And you heard my little five-minute intro here. Do you think it's, it, it, I mean, do you, get, do you get my point of we need to punish these media whores and go after them and bring them down so the other liars know they're not safe? Of course. And in, in fact, Alex, what you're saying with respect to uh, Donald Trump's natural instinct to be truthful, to be powerful, to be fearless, that's natural for him. Uh, he doesn't have to think about that. He doesn't have to have the poll people in the polls or, or premeditate what he's going to do. But you know, the other thing, there's a scientific axiom that says for every action, there's an opposite and equal reaction. And, and that is true as well. As a result of Donald Trump's natural instinct to be powerful, to be truthful, to be fearless, it brings out the natural instinct of the media to be sleazy, to be skanks, to be liars, to be dishonest to be deceitful. That's just the opposite reaction that they have to Trump. Now, you notice, if there's someone else, I don't know, is it Hillary Clinton or Bill Clinton or whoever the hell else, else that comes on, they treat them differently because their natural reaction is different. But with, with, with Trump, uh, the media is just getting worse. And, and, and the stronger he gets, the more, I suppose, skanky or sleazy they, they become. So that's why that's happening as, as that is. And it's going to continue. Uh, in that mode as well, uh, as long as Trump is in the, in the public uh, spotlight. You targeted Sharpton, and he and, and deservedly have really crippled him. I'd say he's 80% fallen. He deserves it. Um, we're going after Williams, Couric, all these folks, not in a vindictive way. These are lying predators squatting on us. Right. And, right. and if we just start going after them, they always fall. Hello? Are you there? Yes, Pastor. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Sorry, Scott I, uh, blipped out. Go ahead, sir. Yeah, I, you're right. We need to go after them. I, we went after Sharpton, and let me say that we we went after him, and God took him down. The, the, listen, Alex, uh, Sharpton had a six o'clock uh, spot on MSNBC. Drive time. People are just getting home, watching the news for more than three and a half years. We went after him. We went down to MSNBC and stood in front of the studio there at Rockefeller Center. For eight hours, we stood in front of that studio and called Sharpton out. He wouldn't come out. In fact, all the other reporters that work for MSNBC went in another door. We found out exactly what door they go into when they're going in to report for, for duty. Anyway, we, he came down. God took him down. We shut down a local restaurant. There's a very powerful restaurant here in New York City. We went before that restaurant one Sunday afternoon with our people out in front of that restaurant uh, telling them that they're advertising on Sharpton's broadcast. And uh, we were there for 15 minutes, a hot 15 minutes. The manager, who was in someplace else, 
owner of the restaurant called us in and said, they'll never advertise on MSNBC again. He's gone. He's now at 8 o'clock on Sunday morning. There's nobody watching him now. It's just a matter of time now before he completely fades. Sure, from they the, say face. So that's what they did with that Pierce Morgan guy. Yeah, right, right. They, they gave him that. But he's gone. He, he's through. But we need to, I mean, you're going after Katie Couric. She needs to be going after. The truth of the matter is there's nothing left there. She's hanging on by a wing and a press. She, she's not entertaining. She's certainly not a good journalist. Yeah, she, she makes has, fraudulent documentaries now. Yeah, but you know, the other thing you were talking about how CNN, I've watched you on CNN on several times, and how they manipulate your presence there. But I was amazed that you were able to satellite broadcast, bring your own camera in to CNN, because, it, I, you know, they're very strict about that kind of thing. But I've watched them, uh, how they manipulate. And they, too, by the way, Alex, have a sense of evil, have a sense of lying and a sense of deception. We got to reach the people that watch CNN and let them know what's being done to them, that they're being brainwashed, that they're allowing. That's a great point. There's still a remnant of people that buy into mainstream media. Now, the right. general public's still somewhat asleep, too, but they get the propaganda from entertainment and things that are embedded in, in media. That's why Obama goes on every show under the sun from ESPN to Jimmy Fallon. How do we reach those people that are still in Zombo land, Pastor Manning? Well, you know, we got to continue to do what we're doing. But I think one of the great ways that I reach them here is by staring up the truth here in Harlem. I get the attention of the New York Times, and a lot of these people are New York Times readers or the CNN people. They're in that liberal mode. That there is nothing too aggressive. But when you actually confront them with the truth, such as what I do confronting black people, and there may be something that perhaps I can, only I can do because I'm able to confront black people in Harlem. I'm able to tell them the truth. I'm able to tell them about themselves, about their EBT cards, about their uh, you know, the sh uh, track phones, uh, about their so-called black president. That gets the media stirred to the point where they come to talk to me. And that way I can get these same people that listen to CNN, or watch CNN, and get a little uh, sentiments of truth in, if you will, a piece of truth. But it's very difficult because they're insulated. And, 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 and they've got the media coverage, so they don't let person like yourself get to them. But we can get them. Sure. And, 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 and just to clarify, I would say that I'm not doing the interview unless I can have my own camera person there. I would then record what was really said. They would try to distort it later, and I would show what was really okay. said. Right. And so then they just stopped interviewing me. Like you said, they're very controlling, period. And for years, I wasn't on until they agreed to have me live with Piers Morgan, and they cut that short as well. So that's why they never let me on live. Because they want to act like it's live with the host, taped an hour before, edit it however they want, cut your audio off, play games, and try to make it look like you said things you didn't say. You know, I saw I saw a clip, I think it was on CNN a week or so ago, where, no, it was on MSNBC, where they were talking about how uh, Trump was on your broadcast and how you, and, and, and trying to align Trump with being off the charts or lose cannon because he talks to Alex Jones. I was sitting there watching it, and and that's exactly. I think it was MSNBC. Chris Matthews, you know that creep, that low life. It's all Chris over. Matthews. Yeah, Slime Balls, his name. Yeah, it's okay. It's like he hosts ball. the show Slime Ball. Yeah, okay, all right. But he's the one who said it. Oh, Trump, it talks to loose cannons like like Alex Jones had your picture up there, and and had you. I mean, it, 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 he stayed on you for a while, and the other little guy that comes on after him. Went after you as when as well. I said, why they why are they trying to skew Alex here? Because tonight? they know if Trump goes with hardcore Americana, he will win. They're trying to manipulate his campaign people to buy into the fact that oh, don't go in the Briar Patch. And, and of course, Trump's smart. He's jumping in the Briar Patch because he knows that's where the populism is. Listen, behind the but scenes, maybe they may be thinking as well, Alex, that if Trump wins, which I think he's going to do that that's going to elevate your position to reach a lot of people because Trump is going to come You're to you. You're right. I the mean, New York Times actually said that last week. They said it's horrible. Alex Jones. And they're, they're afraid of you. It's not Trump. They're, they're afraid of, well, they are afraid of Trump, but they will be afraid of your influence. And, 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 and you too. It's just everybody that's straight talking. That's all we're doing. But the New York Times actually said that. They said the horror of Alex Jones being elevated and legitimate. And they said, right, it appears right. it's already happened. Right. right. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, the whole Pentagon listens. Of course it already happened. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's the thing they're afraid of, and I think that's the thing that needs to happen in America. You know, it, 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 it has been reported throughout history that, you know, you rise, you fall, you go up, you go down. Kingdoms come and kingdoms fall. And it's Their era is now. ending. Their era is ending. Is that what you're Absolutely. saying? That's all, that's all I'm trying to say. That's exactly what I'm so trying to say. So what's coming, my friend? 
Well, I think persons such as yourself are coming, and modestly, I'd like to think that I'm coming as well. Modestly, I'd like to say, but to be sure, uh, persons like yourself are coming. Drudge needs more uh, exposure as well, because they beat Drudge down. We need Breitbart out there more effectively as well. And I think once we get that kind of an American patriotic, if you will, with a godly Christian base, uh, dealing with America again, we can see America. In fact, Trump is going to need you, Breitbart and Drudge, to make America great again. Hell, the New York Times is not going to help him. Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, they're not going to help him. So he's going to need people sure, like Sure, if they endorse him, that will hurt him. And they're just now figuring out 6% of the public trust mainstream media. But getting aside Alex Jones or Matt Drudge, because we, you know, we're all in this fight like you to fight tyranny, we're just manifestations, our growing success and the establishment's fear that they have no credibility. It's not that we're that good, it's that they're that bad. As you said earlier, uh, Trump just naturally, somebody charges the stage, he runs at them. Uh, you know, uh, somebody gets in his face and lies about him, he says, you're a piece of garbage liar. You know, he, they're so scared of the fact, but then when they get around evil people like Hillary or Obama or Michael Moore, they all just fawn over each other. In fact, I know two people that know the heir to the Astor fortune, tens of billions of dollars, folks, in, in hidden assets and things like that. CIA operative Anderson Cooper, folks, look it up. He's really CIA and disinformation operative. His mother is Gloria Vanderbilt. You know, you know who his mother is, Gloria Vanderbilt. That's who his mother was. I think she's deceased now. Absolutely. So he's the heir to that. And I right. know multiple people that know him, and I'm going to stop there. He, he had a driver for three years that he never talk to and people that work for him are told don't look him in the eye he doesn't give people bonuses reportedly and it's the same with hillary and all of them these people don't like hillary they don't pay their taxes they steal money from charities i'm talking about hillary now he they don't you can't look him in the eye they're the most hateful anti-liberal people on earth Joe Biggs here with InfoWars.com. Now, I'm just now leaving Long Beach where the Milo event is going to be today. I've actually got to head back up to UCLA where police are reporting. You can see police speeding by right now. There is currently an active shooter at the UCLA campus where I was at last night with Milo Yiannopoulos and Ruben from the Ruben Report in Baked, Alaska. We're covering a free speech event. Uh, there was a bomb threat called in. Apparently, they just found out about uh, this morning. And there's tons of police driving by right now, heading out here to this event. There's already a few, a few people that are said to have been shot. And there's also the active shooter is still happening right now. It looks like all the police in Southern California are being called up to go and see what's happening at this shooting. So I will be heading up there as fast as possible to uh, report on the shooting at the UCLA campus. Joe Biggs here with Infowars.com. Now I'm at the UCLA campus where earlier today there was an active shooter. Uh, the whole campus went on lockdown and here we are hours later. You can see they've now released the students. The police are starting to pull back a little bit. There's still a large presence of police officers, but there are students coming by. Hey, how long are you guys on lockdown for in there? Uh, three hours. Two, two hours? Yeah. So when it first happened, did anybody kind of give you a heads up as to what was going on? Or were you just kind of like, all right, what's going on? And you're just sitting there with your thoughts to yourself. I think like one student got an email and just told the entire class. We just shut everything down. And we were like, we were in the basement already. So we felt pretty safe. Yeah. yeah. You guys weren't worried at all? What about you? How'd you guys feel? No, we felt pretty safe. We were in the basement area. Um, we Our class was three hours long, so we just were learning the whole time. Everyone knew what was going on. And we just got like texts and people are just hearing rumors. So it was safe, though. Did you guys give you an update as to what happened, though? Yeah, well, um, we were getting updates through, like, the news because we all had um, computers. Yeah. So then we were looking at the news, and then when class was over, we just watched the news and just sat there. How does that feel to actually be on campus at a place where you see this kind of stuff where you're usually watching it, and you have to watch the yeah. news at your, for your own campus where you're at? That's got to be pretty intense. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Everyone was just, like, pretty, like, nervous at the same time, but everyone was kind of, like... Pretty calm? Yeah, people were calm though. Yeah. How'd you feel? I just Yeah, I read what they say. It was pretty calm. Our professor did a good job of just keeping the classroom in check and not like letting rumors and word of mouth get to our heads. Well, that's good. Right on, guys. I won't keep you too long. Have a good one. Hey, how's it going? So as you can see, more students are coming out. Uh, last night, Milo and myself were up here. There was a free speech event. Milo was actually on stage with Ruben from Ruben Report talking about how feminism is cancer and this and that. And here we are the next day, we have this active shooter situation on the campus. And also another interesting thing that happened last night as well, 
was at the very end when Milo baked Alaska and the rest of his crew walked off, they left. They decided to go back inside the venue where they were at, and there was actually a bomb threat called in on that as well. Can I talk to you real quick? For sure. So how long have you been on lockdown? Uh, almost three hours now. And did they tell you anything when it, when it first happened? Or were you just kind of like nervous and not knowing what was going on? I heard gunshots, shut the door, locked down the whole place. Oh, so you actually heard gunshots. It was close to you? Yeah, yeah I was in the building. Uh, I was on the first floor of the building, shut down, and just stayed locked up. What was going through your mind? Um, can I curse on here? Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm going to, you know. Uh, I grabbed a, some weaponry and... Uh, did any police come in and, you know, tell you guys to get on the ground? Did they search anything? Did you experience any police at all while you are there? No. Actually, they, they were trying to get in the door, uh, the SWAT, but uh, I told them I'm in here, I'm by myself, and they, they kept going, so. What'd you use for a weapon? What'd you find? A uh, three-foot crowbar and um, fashioned myself a little little vest. Uh, well, good for you. That's the uh, that's that instinct taking over. Way to go. Some people don't even think about that. At least you're uh, being proactive. I don't have a gun on me, so i got to do something, right? So what do you think the answer to this? Less guns or more guns? Oh, more guns, for sure. I wouldn't be a fan of InfoWars if I didn't think that uh, I would have been better off with a gun in my hand. So. Right on, man. Well, I'm sorry that happened, but at least you're good and you can move on now. So I'm have fine. a good day. Right on. Cool. Thank you. Hey, how long have you guys been on lockdown for? Two hours. <laughs> Did they tell you anything when, when everything kicked off? Or were you just kind of like sitting there by yourself not knowing what was going on? Uh, we had a few updates, but not much. How'd you guys feel? Scared. <laughs> it was really scary. Yeah. We almost cried. <laughs> I, yeah. Well, she cried. I was crying. It was. Did really you guys scary. have to encounter any of the SWAT police or anything? Did they ever come through and search guys or anything like that? No, we only heard the helicopters and some police activity. No gunshots or anything? No, nothing like that. Okay, well, <laughs> you guys have a good day. Glad you're safe. Thank you. How you guys doing? How long were you on lockdown for? We were there for like two hours. What was going through your mind? Um, it was just like, okay, well, I mean, we were in a different part of campus, so we were um, sitting there and we would hear things from different people, just like they were hearing gunshots, and it was like this big blown up thing when I don't think the reality was that situation. It's still awful, but I mean, I think people just hyped it up to be. What do you think is the best thing to combat situations like this? Um, armed armed uh, student personnel or no. maybe uh, faculty or? No. Okay. No. No. Not that. So what do you think? That's why I'm asking. I'm just trying to find out what you think. I think I think what they did was the best situation. I just think that there needs to be more protocol on how to deal with these situations. Because we were sitting in a classroom that didn't have locks on the door. Ooh, that sucks. Yeah, so the doors on the outside were locked, but the actual classroom doors weren't. Did you guys take any kind of measures to, like, board up the door, or, like, put yeah, tables? People, people got close, and we made sure that the outside doors were locked. But we were, we were, we were, we were trying to communally keep each other um, safe. Well, glad you're safe, man. Thanks. Thank you so much. How you doing? Good. What's going through your mind right now? It's been pretty hectic, but glad to go home. Right on. Well, here we are. Whole place on lockdown today for a few hours. Turns out it was a suicide or murder suicide. So another intense day. Tons of students have been scared, stuck inside, not knowing what's going on. Some were actually given the ability to have updates. Some had no idea. And as you heard, the one gentleman was making body armor, found a crowbar, and was ready to fight if necessary. This has been Joe Biggs with InfoWars.com from the UCLA campus. If our government, run by criminals, has been caught running fast and furious and all these other events, time and time again to blame the Second Amendment, and the former Attorney General said, brainwash the public against guns, have they let another mentally ill person out to do this? Did they stage it? Is it a drill? They've done it before. Who knows? I'm not saying the average cop's involved. I'm saying this stinks to high heaven because Trump's coming out to the West Coast. You know, Hillary's out there pushing her anti-gun agenda. Uh, we got helicopters overhead of your TV viewer, Infowars.com forward slash show. For radio listeners, Infowars.com forward slash show to find the free video feed. I pad ipod apple droid apps it's all free right there at infowars.com forward slash show uh but uh, most people are listening on am and fm radio right now describing what's there joe biggs reporting from the scene he was there to cover all the social justice warriors uh running around demonizing the first amendment trying to shut down free speech joe biggs uh, great job getting there so quickly what is your intel 
So what I have so far is here at the UCLA uh, campus, there has actually been possibly three dead. Uh, police have actually found a gun, and it happened at the engineering uh, number four building, is what I'm being told here by some of the locals. Now, there's been uh, small groups of students being uh, rushed out of here from the campus under this bridge here. And as you can see, there's tons of people on top, construction workers that were working on some of the buildings. They've been told to stand back. You've got police here. You've got a lot of media around through here as well, uh, talking or trying to talk to students as they come out. So far, many of them haven't said much, but uh, we're going to be out here as much as we can. Um, hopefully, we can find out where Fox is getting their feed from, where all the police are. Maybe I can get over that way as well. But this was just the first spot that I could get to that I found. I'm not very really, uh, familiar with this campus. Well, I tell you, Joe, you're doing a great job. Uh, be safe. But, I, I mean, just the hysteria. It's on every news channel. L.A.'s being locked down. Hundreds of schools. It's just total hysteria. Over two people shot, and we're not getting details. Why, I mean, why aren't the police just storming in to wherever the supposed shooting happened? What is this thing with, like, hundreds of SWAT team guys standing around, you know, sitting on their thumbs? Yeah, I don't know. It was interesting because last night, you know, I was up here uh, covering the free speech event with Milo. And at that time, there were students that were being extremely violent. Students who don't like free speech. Students who hate really what America stands for. They hate freedom. And they were banging on these doors. Oh, we got a ton of cops swarming in right now. Uh, Keep going, Joe. And as, and as that was happening, there were students banging on the outside protesters trying to get into the building. And uh, I was able to speak with Milo's agent just a little bit ago. And what they told me is they had left the event, went outside, were walking around, decided to go back inside. And when they were hanging out inside, there was a bomb threat called in on them, and the police had to usher them out. The Independent just released a report that said that Google is recording everything that you say, even when you step away from your phone. Now, I want to talk about one product that they have specifically. It's called Google Voice. Many of their products will actually record a conversation that you're having. Even if you're not recording it, their product is recording your conversation. It turns out they've been doing it for years. Specifically highlighted by The Independent, this article in their gadget section, they say that uh, Google has been listening and recording everything you say with Google Voice for years. Conversations so that they can enhance their service and their product, offer you a better product with voice recognition, something that's tailored to your voice. Yeah, right. It looks like, though, that there is a way, if you go on, on their website and navigate it, that you can actually delete some of your records and listen to them. That might be an interesting find. Now, we know that in 1999, the CIA, they created a company called InQtel, and InQtel was basically a CIA front uh, that wanted to invest in tech startups uh, that might have gadgets and new technologies that would be useful for the CIA in their intelligence gathering. So we know this means that Google has a record that they've been keeping quietly for years of everything that you've been saying around their Google products. Now this story, it's reminiscent of an FBI case that we've covered here on InfoWars, specifically not as sophisticated as what Google was doing, but still warrantless search spying on people's conversations without them knowing about it. And specifically one courthouse, the Almeda Courthouse in the Bay Area, not one, but three courthouses. These brilliant FBI agents, they decided to bug lampposts, backpacks, car tires, anywhere that they thought that they could pick up a private conversation that people were having and possibly catch them talking about something illegal. Now, this scheme, they were doing these warrantless um, surveillances because they were trying to gather evidence. This is according to the prosecutor. They were trying to gather evidence of uh, claims of a bid rigging and a mortgage foreclosure auction scheme. So they just decided to bug outside of the courthouse. Oh, yeah, without uh, without warrants, just in case somebody says anything illegal. Now, this story reminds me of another case. Now, we're not talking about Google Voice or a product. We're not talking about law enforcement like FBI. We're talking about lamppost in this case, specifically Las Vegas. Apparently, what you say and do in Las Vegas doesn't really stay in Las Vegas. They came up with these Intelli street lamps, and they're actually listening to you and watching you. Here's how they work. These ordinary street lights, they shine down on the sidewalks. They actually pick up audio and video of the people below, specifically people people walking, pedestrians and motorists, just to make sure that the city's running smoothly, everybody has a better quality, a better experience in Vegas, as if you needed one more reason not to go to Vegas. There's one right there. These Intelli street lamps that are actually listening to you and watching you, well, as if Google using their products to record you, FBI agents trying to bug your car tires so they can get a, catch a glimpse of what you're saying. Now we have light posts and street lamps to worry 
be about picking up our conversations privately without our knowledge or consent. I'm Margaret Hall reporting for InfoWars. So many people around the world lack this freedom. We should never take that for granted. The FBI will soon be legally reading anyone's emails without the disintegrating protection of the Fourth Amendment or the issuance of a warrant. Just for the record, the Fourth Amendment states, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. As it stands, in order for your emails to be searched, currently a FISA court order deemed essential to the protection of national security has to be authorized. However, the FBI can plunder your phone records with a national security letter. But after years of whittling down the Fourth Amendment in the name of the CIA-backed and globalist-engineered war on terror, the Fourth Amendment will soon be DOA. Zero Hedge reports, the 2017 Intelligence Authorization Bill is used to fund the intelligence community, set policy, and authorize resources for intelligence purposes. The 2017 Intelligence Authorization Bill grants the FBI the authority to obtain Americans' email using only a national security letter, meaning it will now be able to access email without a court order. In 2010, the Electronic Frontier Foundation filed an amicus brief attached to a civil criminal suit in the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals. The appeals court ruled in the U.S. versus Warshak case that the government must have a search warrant before it can secretly seize and search emails stored by email service providers. Closely tracking arguments made by the EFF in its amicus brief, the court found that email users have the same reasonable expectation of privacy in their stored email as they do in their phone calls and postal mail. On Tuesday, May 24th, Senator Ron Wyden of Oregon said, This bill takes a hatchet to important protections for Americans' liberty. This bill would mean more government surveillance of Americans, less due process, and less independent oversight of U.S. intelligence agencies. Worse, neither the intelligence agencies nor the bill's sponsors have shown any evidence that these changes would do anything to make Americans more secure. But the suck-ups inhabiting our nation's capital have other ideas. But because we all rolled up our sleeves and worked together, the bill before us today is an exceptional work product, and I'm very proud to support it. The IAA also addresses key strategic questions that we have been asking over the course of the year. First, are we focusing too much on the threats of the day at the expense of the threats of tomorrow? I'd also like to thank the staff on both sides for their hard work on this year's Intelligence Authorization Act, or the IAA. I also appreciate the opportunity to stand here in support of this year's bipartisan IAA. You know, we ask a lot of our intelligence com community when it comes to collaboration. When they collaborate, they best keep us safe. And what we have done today is we are sending to the floor a bill that reflects our own collaboration and shows that what we expect of them, we can also deliver to the House floor. 2017 is shaping up to be the year Big Brother begins secretly hauling in the enemies of the emerging totalitarian state based on their private and once protected correspondences. Just another federal alphabet agency given, yet again, powers that don't exist under the American Constitution and Bill of Rights. John Baum for InfoWars.com. And that's it for our show tonight. Be sure to go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a free trial and get the nightly news, the special reports, the rants, all right there at prisonplanet.tv. Well, I'm Jakari Jackson from the InfoWars Command Center, and we'll see you again tomorrow night.